In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to edit a simple 2D side-scroller game in Unity without any programming at all. You'll need to download the project from the link in the description, which contains this finished game and all of the assets that you see here, as well as a pre-scripted bare-bones game file for you to follow along in this tutorial with. If you're here to learn how to code a fully realized game, you will be disappointed and I invite you to check out literally any other Unity tutorial as it will be full of C-sharp goodness. If you're an artist looking to learn just enough to showcase your beautiful work while moving around a map, collecting things, playing with physics and not dying, then you've come to the right place. First, make sure that you have Unity 2019.3.7 F1 installed or something after that. You can check that by going to your installs in the Unity hub and uh, check what version you have here. If you've got anything later than that, then you'll be able to open this game. Find the downloaded zip file that you should have got from the link in the description below for the 2D side scroller template. So this should be in your downloads. You're gonna to want to right click on that zip file and do extract all on a PC and hit extract. On a Mac, you should just be able to double click on it and it will turn it into a regular blue folder. From within the extracted folder, you should see a file called 2D Side Scroller Template Ben. You can do a cut to that, so right click cut or control or command X, and then go to your documents. And in your documents folder, you should have a folder called Unity Project. If you don't, make a folder called Unity Project. And inside Unity Project, you can do control V or command V and paste in the 2D Side Scroller scroller template into there. And to open up the game that you saw a moment ago, double click on the 2D side scroller template and in assets, you'll see your finished game level in here. You can double click on that. And to test the game, you can hit the play button at the top. You can use the arrows or swads on the keyboard to move around and spacebar to jump. If you die, you'll need to hit the play button at the top uh, to come out of it and then go back in again. If you want to see full screen when you hit the play button, uh, like it's happening on my computer, you'll need to um, come out of play, make sure the play button is released and gray like mine. Go to where it says game, the tab here for game, and you can click maximize on play so that's brighter and highlighted. And now when you hit play, it will fill the screen. When you come out of play, don't forget to always navigate back to the the scene tab here otherwise you'll be unable to move around to navigate around your scene you can use a scroll wheel to zoom in to move your camera left and right you hold alt on the keyboard and middle click on your mouse that's alt and middle click to pan left and right if you want to see your view in a 2d or 3d you can click on here so I'm, I'm going between 2d and 3d if you need to spin the camera in 3d view that's alt and drag left click on your mouse and finally one of the most useful camera shortcuts is if you click on an object and then hit F on the keyboard to focus and then you can spin around or look at that object. Sometimes when you go into 2D mode it sort of zooms into the distance and if you've already clicked on an object you can hit F or alternatively you can click on an object from the left hand panel over here for example if I click on a platform here for example and then hit F it will zoom in on whatever that object is which is really handy so take a moment to check out the different things in the map um, that are working here such as the background parallax music physics character animation, all of which I will cover in these videos. Now let's go to file and open scene and open the 2D bare bones template. Now in here, the only thing that you're allowed to delete is the floor. The character and the pickup item are deeply scripted and you can lose everything if you delete those so be careful so first of all it's going to get difficult to select objects inside this sort of small white square you can just about see the edge of a white square if you zoom out a lot you can see that this is actually the edge of the user interface when you're playing the game and it kind of covers up half of your map so to turn that off up here, go to where it says layers and where it says UI, make the eye closed by poking the eye like that. You'll see a small white lines disappear from there. To delete an object from the game, you can just click on it like this and delete on the keyboard. If you're on a silly MacBook keyboard, you might need to do function and backspace, but you have to hit delete. Backspace won't work for deleting object. And now there's nothing in the scene but the scripted items. So 
you should, you should die in a minute, yep. And we can now add things into here. On the left hand side, you should see a folder called textures. If you go into here, there's a folder called lava station, which contains all of the sprites and many more that you saw from the map earlier on. To come back out of here, you can just click on the word textures there. Now I'd like to show you how to import a environment object from Photoshop. So if you go into the 2D side scroller template project file and into assets and then into textures in there, there's a folder called tutorial images and there's a floating platform Photoshop file that you can open up and Unity does not accept Photoshop files. It prefers JPEGs and PNGs. So I'm just going to check the image size of this file. If I go to image image size, I can see this is 1024 by 259. Just so you know, your character is about 170 pixels wide in Unity, just for reference. So if you're creating your own images, the character is about 170 pixels wide. So I'm just going to hit uh, cancel on that one. And then I'm going to save the Photoshop file. So file, save as, and save it as a PNG file. I'm going to save this directly onto my desktop and then hit save. I'm just saving it onto my desktop as a demonstration for the next bit. So to import your images into Unity, it's really easy. If you want to drag any JPEGs or PNGs from your desktop or documents folder, you can just select them and drag them directly into here and they will go in like that. And you can also see in your textures folder on your computer that they are actually in there as well now. So it's really easy to import your own images into Unity. Now, if you try dragging in an object from like the lava station area here, you'll see that it goes in without any problems. Please make sure you're in 2D mode right now so make sure that 2d is highlighted there and you can drag in any of these and you'll see it works just fine i'm gonna hit delete to delete those but if you go to your own textures that you've just brought in like this that we just brought in from photoshop it will not let you drag it in so to import an image you have to click on it once on the right hand side of unity where it says texture type change it from default to sprite 2d and ui and then hit apply you're now able to drag in an object into your environment like this if you hit play you'll see that we still fall through it. So we've clicked on the object in the scene now, not down here, but in the actual scene. Click on the object and do add component, physics 2D, and let's add a polygon collider, which will automatically trace the outside of the shape and create a collision on it. If you want to move this object around, you can hit W on the keyboard. So you've got W for move, E for rotate, R for resize or you can type in the numbers manually up here. If you're rotating an object and you want to rotate it by set increments, you can hold control on the keyboard and rotate whilst holding control to have more accuracy. If I test this again, you'll see that we land on the object, but we are unable to jump. Um, we're kind of stuck sliding along here as well. The, there's no animations. This is because we need to tell this object to be on a layer called ground up here. Every single time you add an image or sprite from down here, you'll need to change the layer to ground. You can drag select later on and set the multiple objects to be on the ground layer. And once you've done this and you test it again, You'll see that this time you can walk around and you can jump just fine. Now it can get quite annoying to keep changing the texture type from default to sprite 2D and UI every time you bring in a new image. So what I do is I bring in all of my images at once and then I select them all by holding control or command on the keyboard to select multiple files from in here. And then I can change them all from default to sprite 2D in UI and then hit apply to all of my textures at the same time. That then enables me to bring in anything I need to into the game. So I'm now going to show you how to order layers so that things appear in front or behind other objects. At the moment, our character, if you click on the character up here, and you can see on the right hand side all of the attributes that it has on it. One of them is to do with the order in layer. The order in layer is zero, which I like to think of as the center of the scene. So the main character is at point zero. If you have multiple objects stacked over the top of each other like I've added here you can see that when you hit play you have some problems where you have objects that sort of phase in and out of themselves like this without you doing anything the way to stop this is to change the order in layer so 
if I have my character at zero, anything that I'd like to be behind the character, I can set to a negative number and anything in front of the camera to a positive number. In your textures folder, go into the lava station tile set folder and in there, let's find a railing. It should all be in alphabetical order railing drag the railing into unity like this i'm going to hit r on the keyboard and i'm going to resize by clicking and dragging to the left the center square there i'm going to hit w for move and move this over to round about there let's see what happens at the moment so it, by chance it seems to be behind the character i'd like it to definitely be in front of the character so i'll click on the railing and i change the order in layer to one and then hit enter on the keyboard and hit play you can see the characters now behind that railing and if i want something behind the character like this building for example i can drag the building in like that and change the order in layer to minus one and hit enter so now my character is able to run in between the railing and the building as if it was a balcony i'm just going to delete those two objects now let's sort out our final background so if you go into the lava station area over here let's start off with our background sky you can see here there's a little tiny blue square that's only four by four pixels and you can drag that square into your area here and then resize the sky now it's so small that when you drag this to the right it takes quite a while to resize but keep dragging and letting go from the center cube um, you can stretch it obviously but do that and you kind of want it to fill the screen. In fact, you want it to fill up everything forever. So I mean, I've set my scale to, you know, over 9,000 there, and uh, that should do for now. If you go to your 3D view now, by clicking on the 2D button there and hold Alt and drag left click to spin the camera around. I'm gonna hit F to focus on the sky. I'm gonna zoom back in, it zoomed me out quite far then. In fact, it zoomed me out so far, it's quite annoying. So I'm just gonna zoom in just so I can see the map there. If you hit W for move, you can move the sky backwards. This will get clearer later on, but move the sky quite far back like this. Um, I move my sky to about 200 on the Z axis up here on the top right next let's add some buildings in the distance when i'm dragging in images into my game i always like to drag them into the 2d mode otherwise you have no real control over where they seem to go and it gets quite annoying so if i go back to 2d drag in my background industrial buildings like this and if they're too small you can hit f to focus on them like that i'm going to scale these up to about this size and then i'm going to go to my 3d mode and move them back now when you hit play you'll see how the 3d looks kind of different and it zooms in because of the camera and it can get difficult to position all of these objects so what i like to do is get my game view tab here and actually drag it down like this and actually dock the game view into the bottom right hand corner of my unity like this so now when i'm um, manipulating my graphics in my main view I could see the effect it has so these buildings I'd like them to kind of fill up about this much now our character if the robot falls to its death you can see that there's actually a sort of the buildings have an end down there and we don't want that so in here there's a background gray so before I drag this in I want to check how far back my buildings are I'm going to click on them here I can see they are currently at 27 I'll just up that to 30 and hit enter and if I move left and right they seem to be moving about the speed I'd want very subtle now drag in your background gray square like this and resize that background gray square up quite a lot like this and then do w for move to drag it down beneath your buildings you can see if you go to your 3d view you'll need to change the z axis to 30 and then you can do r for resize to scale that to be honest you can just make that really really big and really really big w for move drag that down and um, everything below this point i want to be that color and then if you want to click on your buildings up here and do Control d or command d to duplicate them you can see i've made these so that they are tileable and they kind of join up to themselves like that now let's go to bring in the next level of buildings further forward so we've got sky far background let's bring in mid background now so there are some futuristic skyscrapers called a skyscraper one two and three here i'm going to go to my 2d mode and drag them in like this one two three and i'm going to scale them up like this and go back to my 3d view w for move and i'm going to push these further 
back. I want them to kind of be halfway in between these far background buildings and the platform that we're walking on. That should do it. Now, if I hit play, you can see we've got parallax going on like this. So it looks like there's depth to the distance, which really helps. And you can control how fast these buildings move by how far back or away from the camera they are. And the further back they are, the larger you might need to make them. Now, I do want to check the order in layout for these buildings. Now, because everything, all of these things are at zero, they are doing their layerings properly, but I don't want to trust that. So where it says order in layer, I'm going to change the sky to be minus 100. And I'm going to change this far background here. Now you might need to drag select all of these like that and then set the order in layer of these to be like minus 90 for order in layer. And then these buildings here, one, two, three. So you can just check you've selected all three of those by moving them around a bit with W and order in layer to let's say minus 80. You can see here I've forgotten to do the floor. So I'll click on the floor and I think that was at like minus 90. So now these are definitely going to be in the distance and we won't have any problems with those. I was going to resize these a little bit because I could see the bottoms of them and push them back a bit. If I don't want to see the, after focus, if I don't want to see the bottoms of the buildings, I could just duplicate them. One, two, three. I'm holding shift to select them all. Control D to duplicate and I can move them underneath. I could do R for resize and sort of mirror them like this. I'm just checking this number here to make sure I can get it roughly minus two that should be and then kind of just pop those like that and if they're reflecting it means that if you die or see the under underneath of them you won't see them come to an end and you won't ask any questions. So now you've learned how to import your own images, set up parallax in the background and set up the order in layer for 2D objects to walk in between. In the next tutorial, we will modify the character so it looks less like a ghost and you'll be able to import your own character graphics in as well.